Hi, folks, and welcome to the Mean for Money podcast. This is session number 391. This is the podcast dedicated to helping you put your finances in order. My name is Pete Matthew, and I'm going to share with you everything you need to know and everything you need to do to secure your financial future. I'm here to help you make sense of money. Here we are once again with another in between so Thank you for joining me. It's great to have you with me. Now, the FIRE movement, financial independence, retire early, FIRE. The movement is an increasingly big deal here in the UK. It's already massive in the US, of course. And I've chatted a couple of times about that subject, uh, not least with uh, one of its uh, the biggest UK proponents, uh, Barney Whiter, aka the escape artist. So Barney's been on a couple of times. I've chatted with the Choose FI guys as well. But today I'm chatting to a chap who is building an app specifically to appeal to the FIRE community. The app is called Topia, and I'll be speaking today with Logan Leckie, the CEO and founder. So after my conversation with Logan, I'm going to look at the uh, review that's been left, uh, announce what we're going to be talking about next week, uh, all the usual stuff. But remember, before any of that, this podcast continues to be brought to you with the help of my friends at 7 Investment Management. 7IM have been helping me out here on Meaningful Money for absolutely ages since the spring of 2011, coming up 10 years. How nuts is that? So head over to 7im.co.uk. That's the number 7im.co.uk to check them out and to say thank you to them from me. And the podcast is also brought to you by Meaningful Academy, which is the best place to learn how to take control of your finances, whether you're just starting out or whether you're a serious wealth builder. Everything you need to know is at MeaningfulAcademy.com. Stay tuned to the end of the show for a discount for the Academy. Okay, I love it when people identify an itch that they want to scratch, and then they get to work scratching that itch for themselves and ended up building a business to scratch that itch for other people too. And that's what Logan Leckie is doing with Topia. Topia is a new app uh, to help you track and model your way to financial independence. So looking forward to speaking with Logan all about that. Remember, notes and links from today's show are at the show notes, which is the only one you need to remember if you're out and about. Meaningfulmoney.tv slash session 391. Meaningfulmoney.tv slash session 391 is my conversation with Logan Leckie. Well, it's my pleasure to welcome Logan Leckie to the Meaningful Money podcast. Logan is founder and CEO of Topia, and he's going to tell us all about that today. So, Logan, welcome to the show, man. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me on the on the show, Pete. Really looking forward to it and really excited to be here. Great. Thank you so much. Whereabouts are you uh, talking to me from right now? Uh, I'm actually in London at the moment in, uh, in, a, in, in my flat. <laughs> okay. Have you got out much over the last few months? Uh, well, in the last month I have, I've started getting out on the tennis court um, a bit, which which has been great because um, that, that's a big passion of mine, which I sacrificed from, yeah, probably sure. from about March to to June, maybe when 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 everything was shut. But um, a little bit, getting out more and more back in the office, which is good. Yeah, good stuff. So give us a bit of a bio, Logan, please, just so we know sort of who we're talking to. So, you know, you are what it is that uh, you've... Well, a little bit about your backstory and really how you got to this point. I always think that's quite an interesting story, how people got to the point at which they're doing what they're doing right now. Yeah, for sure. So obviously I'm I'm Logan Leckie and I think where my story really starts was about two years ago, I came across um, this very kind of powerful movement and concept and, I, and it basically had a huge impact on my life. And I think my friends and family would probably go as far to argue that I became kind of borderline obsessed um, <laughs> with this movement. And the movement I'm talking about is, is, it's got several names, but it's known as the financial freedom movement or the financial independence movement, um, or maybe better known as the FIRE movement, which stands for financial independence, retire early. Um, and like I said, I kind of discovered this movement two years ago and, and fell kind of passion, passionately in love with it. Um, and since then, about a year ago, I set up an app called Topia, which is the first ever um, app released within the kind of FIRE community, which fundamentally is to try and help um, people achieve financial independence and financial freedom. And, you know, I think a bit of, bit of uh, even previous background before that was that um, always quite interested in business. I had a stint working in a bank and then a stint working in a startup. Um, and then when I started seeing quite a lot of inefficiencies within the financial freedom 
movement around kind of tracking people's progress, I thought perfect opportunity to follow a big passion of mine and also try and um, streamline the process of um, getting to fire. So here we are now. We're in the process of developing the app, hoping to release end of September. Great stuff. So I often find that, you know, when people form startup companies or whatever, there's a particular itch, usually of their own, uh, the, the press they were trying to scratch. But you said you noticed some inefficiencies about, you know, uh, how people track uh, their progress towards um, financial independence. So can you just sort of speak into that a little bit? What particularly were those inefficiencies? What were the issues uh, or the itches that you were trying to scratch? Yeah, for sure. So there are two kind of core um, itches, which I was trying to scratch. The first one is an inefficiency, really. And it's that when you pursue financial independence, um, there's a lot of kind of tracking and, and, and it sort of turns into a numbers game, which, which involves some relatively complex calculations. And it's basically, it came to a point where I thought the way people tracked their progress was very um, primitive and slightly outdated. And it all revolved around quite large, complex Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> and I know um, Excel whiz and I'm neither, and um, I'm not an accountant nor a, nor a mathematician. So, so I found um, this way of kind of tracking my progress to financial freedom and working out, you know, when I'm going to get there um, pretty tough and just not that user friendly and, and almost, almost turn me off the process so that was quite a big inefficiency and i just thought you know there was room for an app an all-in-one fire app which automated a lot of the process which 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 utilized open banking to streamline the process and also helped out um to, uh, which helped to carry out a lot of the calculations um which you know non-mathematicians or, or people who aren't that familiar with maths or don't like maths that much might struggle with um and 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 the second itch which which is probably the 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 more important one is that you know, I really do believe that financial independence can have a massive impact on people's lives. Um, it's so, so powerful once you reach there. And, and, and like I said, can completely change someone's life and have hugely, hugely positive effects. And, um, you know, I've, I've seen it happen. I've seen people reach financial independence and, and, and I've seen the change it can have on their lives. And, you know, it's always been my mission for Topia to almost act as a channel which, which, which transforms financial independence from quite a small niche into a very well-known, very accessible concept, which anyone and everyone can take part in. Um, so they're probably two, two, two biggest itches there. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that, that makes sense. I wonder how you would define financial independence. So I don't mean, you know, the clues in the name, isn't it really, you know, you, you don't have to work, but, you know, is there a kind of uh, like a formula that, that you tend to use or that the community tends to use, uh, a kind of a way of arriving at like a magic number because it, clearly there's a finish line, right? So how do we know what that is for our individual circumstances? Yeah, for sure. So in its simplest form, you know, what is financial independence? Financial independence is saving and investing enough money to be able to live off your investment return. So... You know, that means if the first thing you need to do is, you know, work out how much am I spending every year? And once you work out that, the next calculation is thinking, okay, so I'm spending, you know, £30,000 a year. How much money do I need to accumulate to be able to give me an investment return, which equals £30,000 a year, which means I can then live off that return. And without digging too deep into the numbers, there's um, something called the 4% rule, which... Um, which, which is very much embedded within the financial independence community. But the 4% rule is basically that whatever your portfolio size, you need to be able to withdraw 4% of that in order, to, uh, in order for that um, portfolio size to be sustainable and, and carry on growing and basically for you to not run out of money in the long term. And the situation is basically, you know, people much, much cleverer than myself um, have run lots of lots of different kind of simulations around this 4% rule. And they've proven that looking back over every, you know, market scenario in terms of the stock market, if you followed the 4% rule in the long term, you, um, you would not run out of money, which, 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 which is a core thing if you're, if you're trying to reach financial independence. So what, what the FIRE community basically does is you find out what your annual expenditure is. So the easy example, just, just the easy example to use is if I think I'm going to spend 40,000 pounds 
every year. With the 4% rule, you times the 40,000 by 25 and you get a million, um, a million pounds, which is kind of your nest egg, which you're, which you're kind of shooting to reach. And then, you know, like I said, if you draw, if you're investing that, that nest egg, the average return you should get in the market or the average return should be between, you know, six and 8%. And that means if you draw down 4% off that 1 million pound nest egg, you get to your 40,000 pounds, which is what I said I need to live on. So I get that 2% buffer, two, three, 4% buffer between the average market return and what I need to get, which not only provides me with a buffer in case the market does tank, which which we saw it did in March. It's obviously rebounded since, but it also um, bears in mind inflation and um, and things like that. So that's kind of how you get to that final number. Um, and I think you know the key thing about FI is that once you reach that number, by definition, I said your investment return pays for your um, annual expenditure. And what that does is it basically means you are no longer dependent on your salary. Mm. If my investment return is paying for my cost of living, I'm not dependent on my salary. And for me and for a lot of people in the FR community, that just equals freedom. It means when you're not constrained by money, when you're not having to exchange your time for a salary every week, every month, every year, you gain the control and the freedom to spend your time exactly how you want to spend it. Mm. And the question I always float around is, you know, if you didn't have to go to work next Monday and the Monday after that and the following Monday and the following Tuesday, what would you spend your time doing? Would you, you know, be um, watching your kids grow up? Would you be seeing your friends? Would you be, would you be taking part in, in that hobby you love? And that's what, that, 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 that's what FI does really, Pete. It, yeah. it just gives you back control of your time and it allows you to get up every day and personally decide, right, how am I going to spend my time today? And we see in this society at the moment, a lot of people, you know, feel like they have to go to work. They have to earn that salary. Otherwise, they um, they don't have enough money to live on. And FI basically turns that on its head, um, provides that kind of route to escape the rat race um, and earn that freedom. Mm. Playing devil's advocate a minute, I don't share this view personally, but, you know, it's been said, and I'm sure you've come across it many times, but I'd be interested, you know, as somebody embedded in the fire community, what you would say to this. There is often sort of a criticism level to say, well, it's fine, you know, if you're working in the city earning 150 grand a year and you can keep your, you know, your uh, expenditure down to, I don't know, 60,000 or something, say, and then, you, you know, if you can get to the point where you've got such a big income, you can save 60% of it or, or more or whatever, then it's obviously going to be fairly... Um, quick track to financial independence but for most people that obviously isn't the case they will have to really fight to get to the point where they're saving 10 percent of their income 15 or whatever um imagine you've heard that before um i just wonder what your views are on that sort of uh, perception of how easy or otherwise it might be to achieve financial independence yeah it is a valid perception but i think it's also a slight misconception because the great thing about FIRE is that there are so many different levels of financial independence and there are lots of different kind of categories within financial independence as well. You can have um, fat financial independence, lean financial independence, barista financial independence, and, and they basically break it down um, based on kind of your income level and make it very accessible um, depending on what income level you are. And I think you know, the first thing um, to go over is a lot of FI is based on your expenditure. And if you've got a very lavish lifestyle where you're spending, you know, 60, 70, 80 K um, a year, then of course you're going to need a very big salary to kind of support that. And also to um, save up and invest enough money to, to um, support that lifestyle. But then a big part of the financial independence community, which, which I, I really, really like about it is this idea that, the first step to, to financial independence is really taking a step back and and reflecting on what brings you value in life and, and, and what makes you happy. And then once once you reflect on that, what 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 you should do is divert a lot of your expenditure to what makes you happy and mm. cut out everything else. And that's what we see is a lot of people have very kind of wasteful spending habits. Um, we live in a very kind of um, consumerism society where it's so easy to spend, 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 spend. And what we find a lot in the FI community is through this reflection, a lot of people can kind of reduce their annual expenditure by 25, 30, you know, even 40% sometimes just by this very simple reflection. Um, and then looping back around to, to the perception of, you know, you need a big salary. I think, you know, it, it, it just isn't, isn't correct because 
fire, like I said, so many different levels. If you can reduce your expenditure, then you can naturally have to save up less money. So if you're on a slightly lower income, you can reach there. Yeah, um, and then also, I think a lot of people, you know, have that mindset. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not earning a big salary in, in, in the city. There's no point in me, me trying to reach FI. But I've seen it so many times, time and time again, that the minute people start the journey to FI, they realize that they can decrease their expenditure, but they can also increase their income through side hustles, through yeah. asking for promotions. And then they start slowly and then they quickly realize that they're progressing much quicker than they originally anticipated towards an FI number. And it turns out it's much more achievable than they actually thought originally. I yeah, I agree. How important do you think it is that, you know, people actually know what they're aiming for, that it's not just the sort of slightly vague, wouldn't it be nice kind of thing? How important is it that they actually have like an end goal, something that they're really shooting for? It's incredibly important. It's, 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 yeah, extremely important. I think, you know, it's like everything in life, you really need that goal. You really need that thing you're shooting for. Um, and what this does is it completely maximizes your kind of progress and efficiency. Um, and, you know, it really does make a monumental difference. It makes everything more tangible. It makes, you know, when you're tracking your progress, if, if, if you're kind of tracking to this number, which you haven't come up with, you're not really sure what it is, it just really slows you down. So just having that goal, which you predetermined and to know that you're shooting for it, just really homes in and almost gives you that tunnel vision, which you need to, to achieve, um, to achieve FI. And like I said, I mean, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't take a huge amount of work to kind of find out what, what that number is, but it, but it will make a huge difference in terms of your progress um, and ability to reach FI. I want to obviously uh, talk in just a second about how Topia can help uh, with this, but you know, we've experienced somewhat unprecedented times in recent uh, weeks and months, and uh, a lot of people on the journey towards financial independence will have had a knockback, you know, might be redundancy or, uh, you know, reduced hours or, or whatever. How can people sort of roll with the punches? Have you got any sort of advice or suggestions as to how people might be able to pick themselves up, dust themselves off and, you know, refocus perhaps once they get back into work or whatever? Because it can be quite disheartening, I imagine. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, the, the almost more important factor which which is worth bringing up is that you know i think if you did potentially get redundancy or got reduced hours and you didn't have you know somewhat of a savings or investment pile then i think you would be in a much worse position generally because if you're living paycheck to paycheck and really kind of on the line then and you, and you suddenly lose that income then you're at that stage where you're like wow i've, I've lost my income I'm, i don't have anything to pull back and i think the great thing about people pursuing FI is that, you know, the one thing they do have or should have naturally is quite a big kind of buffer, which, which I'm sure a lot of people within the personal finance space call that kind of emergency fund. Yeah. So the great thing is anyone pursuing FI shouldn't be very stressed. I mean, you know, you've got that emergency fund, which should last you at least six months. So the great thing is you shouldn't be stressed and panicking. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think the key is just to have that long-term outlook, which is, which is what so much of, financial independence and general investing is about and, and and it's always about you know in the short term we're going to have ups and downs in fact all, all you have to do is look back over um the market over the last hundred years you know it's, it's shooting down but in the long term we're always going to go up yeah. so i think the key is just to stay positive um just you know trust that you've got that emergency fund stay positive mm. and um continue on the journey yeah i think you're dead right the the skills and chops that you hone as you're pursuing financial independence serve you very well when things happen. And like you say, not only practically because you've got money behind you, uh, and which takes a lot of pressure off, obviously, but also just the mindset. Yeah, you're dead right. The long term, you know, this is a blip. Uh, let's sort of lift our heads up and, and see what we can do to uh, to move forward, uh, you know, despite everything that's going on. So, yeah, good advice. Definitely. Okay, man. So talk to me about Topia then. So, you know, this is an app. How does it work and what is it going to uh, bring to the party here for folks uh, pursuing financial independence? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, like I said, the key thing we're trying to do with Topia is really streamline the process, make FI extremely accessible um, to anyone and everyone who might who might take a fancy in it. Um, so with that in mind, you know, we've, we've embedded a couple of 
pillars which we're building Topia around. Um, the first one is simplicity. Like I alluded to earlier, we really take a lot of the brunt work out of any of the kind of calculations or kind of financial data input. So Topia is built on several algorithms such as the 4% rule, um, which carries out all, all the calculations necessary um, for you to get to FI. So when you come onto Topia, what you're displayed with is, is you know, a very nice, um, graph and a couple of illustrations about where you are now, what your FI number is, how long it's going to take you to get there. Um, so it's you know very simple. You can log on and immediately everything's there. It's very clear where you are and where you're trying to get to. Um, secondly, we use you know cool cool stuff like open banking, which means everything's in real time. Um, you know all your investments accounts, your savings, stuff like that. It's all coming through Topia, so it's almost acting like that kind of financial FI hub. Um, so it's all in real time. It's all automated. You can very easily track um, track your progress. And then one of my favorite features is this kind of tinker feature we've embedded into Topia. And that lets you tinker around with your numbers and almost lets you plan for future events. Um, and I think a lot of people pursuing FI find it quite hard to plan for the future. And, and it's big life events like, you know, what happens if I get married? What happens if I have kids? What happens if I want to do this, this, and this? And through this tinker feature, you can create scenarios where you say, okay, what if I get married and spend this amount on the wedding? What if I have a kid and spend this amount on the kid? And then what Topia will do, it'll integrate those scenarios and say, okay, okay, Pete, if you, if you have, um, if you have that big wedding, it's, it's going to cost you this amount and it's going to set you back, um, in terms of your FI date by this, um, by this much. Okay. And if your wedding's half the money, it will do this. So it's very good for scenario planning. And then lastly, we've got a really nice little educational feature, um, so you get daily articles, daily content, which is all built around building your understanding around FI, helping you get there quicker and really um, trying to speed up uh, as much as possible how long it takes you to get to that um, eventual FI number. Very cool. So you sort of um, are articulating this almost in terms of a date. It's like, you know, you will achieve by sort of such and such a date. Is that part of it? Exactly, exactly that. Cool. So yeah, if you went on and um, you inputted all, well, through Open Banking, we, 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 we collected all the data we'd need, then we'd be able to tell you exactly when you'd be financially free. And then, like I said, in real time, depending, you know, next month, if you spend a couple hundred pounds and you normally spend, your FI date would actually increase because you're saving, um, you're spending more and saving less. So it's all in real time. It's always updating. Um, so yeah, it's very, it's very um, kind of in real time like that. That's, yeah, that's that's very cool. Are you bootstrapping this then, Logan, or you got backers or what? Yeah, so it's all pers- um Yeah, we're bootstrapping at the moment. I've personally financed it at the moment. So what we're building now is kind of the minimal version or the sure. MVP, we call it. Um, so you know, I've been very lucky that we found a great development partner who's um, who's who, who's building a great product. So we're bootstrapping at the moment. We want to get some sort of funding over the next couple of months in order for us to take Tokyo to the next level. There are a couple of um, really cool features we want to bring in, um, but because of the bootstrapping nature, we yeah. have to cut for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, inevitably, so you've got, you're going to do what, what you can, but um, I, I imagine that'll be there's something that'll be very attractive. It's, it's funny, I sometimes feel like the financial services industry, I mean, that's a massive church, right? That's from you know banks to insurance companies, uh, to advisors and brokers and, and stuff like that. I sometimes feel that it kind of feels like we should be at, at odds with the FI community, whereas I think that really ought not to be the case. I think we ought to be looking to see how we can learn uh, lessons from uh, the FI community. One pivotal moment for me was uh, my good friend Andy Hart uh, of the Maven Money Pack, uh, podcast uh, got up at his own conference. He has a conference on behavioral finance uh, and a couple of years ago now and said that financial advisors, for whom the conference was largely aimed at, uh, should be learning from the FI community, um, which uh, I, I thought was quite, well, prescient and uh, sort of almost prophetic, really. I've yet to fully see it uh, come about, but it would strike me as potentially quite a good fit and lots of synergy there, it, as long as, of course, the industry can put aside its... Uh, uh, overcharging <laughs> and things like that. <laughs> what do you reckon? A hundred percent. I mean, a hundred percent. I think you know the, what the the thing about FI, which which I think there could be a lot of synergy with um, in terms of that overlap, is that especially with with young professionals, I think 
again, we're in a society where it's so easy to fall into negative financial habits. Mm. Um, and it's so easy to do that. And, and, you know, my biggest rant I've got is, is, is with the UK educational system mm. where at no point during our schooling, we're taught anything about personal finance, which is why, you know, every year, hundreds of thousands of, um, you know, 20, 21, 22, 23 year olds graduate university and, and go into the workforce and, and go into the big cities and have no idea what to do with their paycheck when it mm. comes in. So the natural thing to do is spend it. Um, which, which I experienced personally when, when I first moved into London, you just get into the spend, spend, spend. Um, so it's, it's, it's these negative financial habits. And the thing about FI, which I think is really important and, and where, and where, um, you know, the um, financial advisor industry could learn from is that I think what financial independence does is it provides a big enough carrot to dangle in front of people to say, you know, if you change your financial behavior, you can get this carrot. And, and, and like I said earlier, this carrot is, is massive. It can change your life. It can free up your time. It can give you the freedom um, to do exactly what you want when you want. And I've seen it. I've seen people completely change their spending habits, stop getting the Ubers, stop getting the deliveries, stop having 18 pints on a Friday night in the pub um, because they've got this, you know, this goal, which is, which is very real and, and, and they're very vested in. And tell me if I'm wrong, Pete, but, but I think, you know, that, 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 that's one of the hardest parts, you know, hardest parts of your, of your industry, right? It's, 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 you know, trying to get people to break away from, you know, spending their hard earned cash willy nilly, and you know, looking more long term and saying, you know, if you if if if, if you stop spending this money and, and do this with it, then it's actually going to grow. It's not going to go down go down the drain. Um, yeah, I'm sure you're right. I think that that's uh, there's lots of elements. I think uh, where it could uh, it could work together. Just the development, obviously, financial services industries. That industry is there primarily to sell products, and mm. those products can have a purpose, uh, right? And uh, obviously, if there's a uh, a right level of charging where everybody uh, wins, then you know that that's perfectly uh, acceptable. I just think we could learn from the aggressive reduction in costs and not just assume. I sometimes feel my industry is so uh, tied to its past and mm -hmm. just can't look further than the end of its own nose. You know, because so, well, we've always done it this way. We've always you know, charge for implementation uh, of a pension or, or something. And, you know, why should that change when, of mm. course, you can do all that sort of stuff yourself in about 90 seconds flat on any one of a dozen <laughs> platforms. So I don't know why anybody would pay an advisor to set up <laughs> a pension. You know what I mean? So it, it yeah. just it's a funny kind of world and, and we haven't caught up yet, we being the industry. So it'd be interesting to see how that continues. But I would have thought for a forward thinking firm backing something like Topia would actually give them great insights and uh, would uh, help them position for what do you know, I often think the fire movement is the embryo which will develop into a much greater consciousness around uh, watching costs, watching spending patterns, cash flow management, and achieving uh, financial independence. I hope that to be the case anyway, that more and more people will catch the fire um, as it becomes more mainstream. So uh, we'll see. I wonder, Logan, if you've got any sort of favorite resources for those, you know, perhaps those who are just starting to hear about uh, the fire movement and all that way, the sort of uh, blogs or podcasts or videos or whatever that you would uh, send them to. Yeah, for sure. So there are a couple of kind of favorites I have. I think one thing to bear in mind is um, I think all of them, all of my favorites are, are US based because the FI or the fire movement is much bigger in America. But I mean, the underlying concepts are exactly the same and the information they're bringing down is exactly the same. It's just slightly twanged for a US customer base. But Mr. Money Moustache is is 100% up there as my number one. He's got some really, really fantastic articles. And um, he's personally kind of revolutionized and, well, revolutionized the fire movement within the US through his blog. Um, Choose FI is a great, yeah. Great, great, great podcast. Um, Mad Scientist is another good one. Um, but he's got a podcast and a blog. And then also Financial Samurai is another good one, which um, which I read on the regular. Yeah, I love the uh, Choose FI guys. They were great guests and uh, their book is uh, outstanding as well. Here in the UK, obviously, there's the Escape Artist, uh, uh, yep. a man I admire very much, Barney Whiter. And uh, anybody else here in the UK that you would sort of put people towards? It's not that many, is there? There's not a huge amount. There are quite a few kind of smaller scale ones. There's one called the Banker on Fire, which gives you quite a good kind of, um, you know, city worker trying to pursue FI. He's quite a good one, which is UK focused. But there aren't a huge amount, quite a lot of kind of smaller, smaller scale ones, which are growing. 
Yeah, okay, I'll uh, listen back to this and uh, make some notes and put some links in the show notes. But Logan, it's been good you know, to hear your perspective on the whole fire movement, and I wish you extremely well with Topia. I think uh, it's clearly going to fill a need. You know, if it if it uh, scratches your itch, then it'll do the same for lots of other people. I, I think so. So, give us an idea of timescales and then how people can sort of find out more about it because I know it's not quite out yet as we record this back end of August. Is that right? That yeah, correct. So the timescale is we're looking to release it at the uh, start of October. But we're only releasing it to a kind of exclusive early adopter, uh, early adopters list for um, 2020, for the end of 2020. However, you can be a part of that at the moment. If you go onto um, our website, which is topia.life, um, you can jump onto the waiting list and be in that first, I think we're getting 300 people on board in 2020. Um, if not, if, if, if you don't fancy that in 2021, we'll be officially releasing it. Um, for the for the public, um, which which it will be available on the on the app store. So 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 that's our general timeline going forward. Good stuff. So Topia dot Life is the place to go to sort of sign up for that waiting list and uh, to find out a little bit more. Is that right? Uh, yeah, correct. Fantastic. Well, Logan, thank you for joining me. But I wish you every success with it, and I'll, I'll be watching with interest. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Pete. Really enjoyed it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. As Logan said, you're going to have to wait a little while to get your hands on Topia, but join the waiting list at topia.life. There's a link in the show notes. Uh, join the waiting list. You might get in early. My thanks again to Logan for his time. You know, I get a lot of approaches uh, for people to come on the show and talk to me and hence to you. And I tried to be really picky for your sake. So uh, I hope that I get it right. I really enjoyed chatting with Logan and I hope you enjoyed it too. Okay, Meaningful Academy, there is a a permanent coupon code now for podcast listeners. That's you guys. You've done so much to help me, and you've been so supportive of everything that I'm building here at Meaningful Money. So this is a permanent discount just for podcast listeners. £25 off the price of financial foundations. That's the first phase of the academy for folks starting out, learning how to budget, pay down debt, and start to understand a little bit about you know investments and pensions and life insurance, all the stuff that we need to do to start to build uh, our wealth and our financial freedom for the future. There's £75 off the build wealth phase. That's the, uh, well, the phase about building wealth. I named it that for a reason, where we learn about uh, investing, uh, financial planning, behavioral finance, and crucially offers a year's access to Voyant Go, the most amazing financial planning software you will ever lay your hands on. And then there's 83 quid discount off the bundle of the two, if that's your thing. So those amounts, by the way, I give or take a few pence because the whole system works on percentages, so I can't be exact. But the coupon code that you need to enter is simply podcast. Okay, so if you off, uh, enter that in the box on registration, the site will automatically apply the discount. Now, for those of you waiting for phase three of Meaningful Academy, which is all about retirement planning, I thank you for your patience. Recent health issues have put back the timeline for that, but I'm working on it where I can. I just don't have a date for you yet. But you can register your interest. Uh, Click through to retirement planning from the homepage and leave your name and email address and we'll keep you posted. Everything you need to know and do uh, is at MeaningfulAcademy.com. Okay, uh, review here titled The David Attenborough of Personal Finance (laughs) by somebody called Civil Ginger Beer. Uh, I have binge listening to this podcast for several weeks now and have learned far more in this short time than I'd ever known on this topic. Pete's advice has made me take action by making my first investment in passive funds. Fantastic. On top of this, Pete has a great distinctive style and is very easy to listen to, hence my comparison to Britain's favorite wildlife documentary narrator. Even though I'm yet to see any returns from my new wealth building approach, I couldn't be more grateful for Pete's help in making me finally push the button. Well done, Civil Ginger Beer. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to leave a review and well done for taking action. That's what it's all about. No point listening to me and then doing nothing with the information. So well done for taking action. You will see benefits. You've probably had a little bit of a rocky time of it since you uh, left that review, but hold your nerve. You'll be fine. Keep doing what you're doing. And if you like what you're hearing here, please do consider leaving me a rating or review. Meaningfulmoney.tv slash iTunes if you're of an Apple podcast persuasion. But if you're listening to me on Android or Spotify or anywhere else that you can leave me a review, please do so. It helps others to hear about the show and to subscribe because your review and rating keeps me near the top of the rankings, which is where we like to be. 
Don't forget the Farewell promotion is uh, still on. So if you haven't written your will yet, head over to farewell.com. That's F-A-R-E-W-I-L-L.com. And quote the code MEANINGFUL40 at the checkout. You'll get 40% off their already very low prices when they write their will, uh, your will for you. And Meaningful Money will receive a small commission too. So you're going to be supporting the channel, ticking a big thing off your to-do list. So do it. Farewell.com. Use the code MEANINGFUL40. Okay, next time I'm going to be chatting about all sorts, really, with fellow finance nerd Andy Webb of BeCleverWithYourCash.com. And he also runs a Facebook group for UK money bloggers. So he knows everybody that uh, is writing or podcasting or YouTubing about personal finance in the UK. So looking forward to chatting with Andy next week. And that, folks, is it for this session of the podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for joining me. Any questions or comments, go to the show notes, meaningfulmoney.tv slash session 391. My thanks again to Logan Leckie of Topia for joining me. Uh, head over to the show notes. There's a link to Topia there or just go to topia.life. Sign up to be an early adopter. Who knows? Thanks for your time. Hope you enjoyed it, folks. I'll talk to you next week. Cheers.